Mr. Kretschmer, always a pleasure to have you on the program. Oh, it's fun to be with you again. Part of your legacy, part of your, as the Prime Minister, was your relationship with China, and it's a big part of the book. And you're critical about how Canada handled the two Michael situation. You write a lot about it, that Christian Freeland hasn't read the Canada extradition laws. And you said that the Trudeau government made a mistake, that they thought it was a legal situation, and you were giving advice that it was a political situation. Um, did Canada mishandle that situation? You know, it's difficult to blame only the Canadian government. But uh, when Trump, a few days after Madame Wong was detained, he said, if they solve it, you know, well, if we have a deal on trade, we'll solve it. We, we stop. So that's just a sign that had nothing to do with the law. It was for him in his mind. It was a business deal. It was a card that he was playing in his negotiation with the Chinese. And we paid the price. But Mr. Kretschmer, the Trudeau government's view on this was they rejected your advice because they said your advice would reward hostage diplomacy. And wouldn't it? You know, it's always very complicated. We were the victim of the, of the government of America. America. The well, yes, United States forced us, and the government decided to go along with it because they thought that they had no choice. I thought they had a choice. But, you know, they decide. For me, I gave my advice, and I do that. I did all my life. I spoke up my mind on that. I was not alone. There was a, a lot of people who wrote a letter of the people of the highest level in the legal minds in Canada had written a letter about it. But were they right in the end? We didn't have to reward China's, uh, the two Michaels got out. I just... I you just... know, but the problem is it was, you know, it, it was resolved with exchange of prisoners, as I proposed. And there was a delay of three years that was not needed. That's my views. Right. They have the right to have a different view. Right. You know, for me, I just say, I said that publicly. And it's, at that time, nobody noticed. Now I write about it because when I wrote these articles is when during the time, the date is there. You know, circumstance changes. Now it's, I'm happy, it's over. I think it was um, a lot too long. I'll ask you one last question on this because it's a delicate political situation to both deal with the superpower, but also what's the line where you're appeasing them? The line between appeasement and constructive engagement. You know, you have to see the situation and you use your best judgment. You cannot a priori conclude what you will say. There's all sorts of circumstances in different times that lead to different conclusions. And when you're prime minister or you're a government, you have to make difficult decisions. It's never white or black. So you have to decide and you live with the consequences. I made a lot of decisions during my 10 years as prime minister and my government too, that you know a lot of people did not agree with us. And I, we did it. Mr. Kretschmer, we are living through a time of reconciliation. You, you are the former Minister of Indian Affairs. You talk about it, obviously, in your book. Um, now we're, there's the recovery of the unmarked graves at the residential institutions, as you know. Uh, I know that you were involved in the white paper. This is a big part of your life. A lot of folks say you and Pierre Trudeau should have shut down the residential school system then. Instead, you it know, wasn't. It, What's your view of it now, and do you, do you take any responsibility for that? They were there since a long time. And, you know, when the, the last one was closed by me when I was prime minister. We had to manage the problem at that time. You know, education was a very important thing for natives. When I became the minister, there was only a dozen, I think, Indian people graduating from university. Thousands and thousands are graduating every year now. Education is the key. And in those days, in the isolated area, that was the system they had.
but they don't regard that as education. They regard it as cultural genocide. No, no, but you know, I'm telling you what is the, the, the situation. And uh, we were not in form of any abuse at that time. So that was a situation. And uh, for me, you know, I offer with my white paper to abolish the Department of Indian Affairs, to abolish my job. And the Indian Act. Yes. And now the people complain we have Indian Act. They refuse that. You know, I had to back down. Don't you remember that? I do. After there consultation, was, was... when people were arguing that we had an apartheid system, having reserved for them an Indian Act and a Department of Indian Affairs and a Minister of Indian Affairs. I said, you're right. You know, it is an apartheid system. I will abolish that. And the reply to me is gone to be a cultural genocide. Last question on this. Justin Trudeau has apologized, as you know, for the situation. But I, you know, going, I, I just want I'm to not you. here to talk about the... No, but would the, you... The, the, no, I'm not the Monday morning quarterback, okay? And I'm not the mother in law. Ask me a question about... Well, well, I wonder, because you're, just quickly, but has you been asked to apologize uh, for any role in that? Not that I remember. And would you apologize? Uh, you know, don't ask me. I didn't... It was not a problem. I were asked other things, but not by the natives on that. My preoccupation was not solving the problem of the past. It's nothing I can do. It was to build the future. And at that time, it, it was my concentration. Mr. Kretschia, this country has come through the pandemic, and we are in a financial situation that is unprecedented. When you became the prime minister, you also we were in a mess, and we got out of it. What advice does this, what, what do we learn from your time when we're in a, the same situation financially? Every country of the world faced this very difficult problem. And, you know, how they will manage it, it's not my problem, because it's completely different. But it, we, we will have to face it. The reality will hit and will face it. But they have no other choice. The Brits have done the same thing, the Americans, the French, the German, and how they will get out of it, it's all a thing that we did not believe. You remember uh, the Socred were proposing to create money. Yes. You know, the Socred of Real Kawet. I had to fight it. Now it's what we're doing. We're printing money like crazy. Are you worried about that? Yes. Why? Because, uh, you know, it's unusual. We're moving into a, a dark alley. But we'll have to go to the end of the alley. Is it necessary to do it? They call it, you know, the fat printing money or you know, quantitative easing, all these bank terms, as you know, as a former minister of finance. Are you worried about the inflation, the cost of doing this? Because there's a lot of folks that say, if we don't do it, we're toast. You know, they have no choice. But they knew that there would be difficult circumstances coming. Mm. And with the pandemic, like we had, it was so unusual that they have done something that is unusual. A lot of the economy, economists, you know, so-called experts, have to swallow very hard mm. recommending to do that. Right. But I'm not the prime minister. I'm not running the government. I had a, a good team with me, and we started in 93 in a terrible mess. And when we quit, the economist said Canada is cool. You remember they had put the moose with rosé glasses in the eyes, you yeah. know, the, the, when I left, because we had, been the, had become the example of the world. The UN used to proclaim Canada the best country in the, Canada, in the world to live in when I was there. So I, you know, and my, with my team. So, you know, I did it. I did what I had to do, and they do what they think they have. In your book, you write about the referendums, the famous two referendums, I remember them well, but now in Alberta, and you write about Jason Kenney in the book, there's just been a referendum on the question of equalization. And he wants to get rid of the equalization formula. I should point out, as you know, that he was part he of He cannot do it. It's a waste of time completely because you need a change in the Constitution. Yes. And to do that, you need seven provinces to agree. Good luck. But the sentiment is real there. There's a oh. sense of alienation. You, don't, you think Jason Kenney's exploiting that? You know, I, you know, you know, of, 
When you're in Alberta, you know, it is almost her culture to, of complaining. I was there, but I would talk frankly with them. I had five members of parliament elected in Alberta, yeah. you know, better than uh, anybody else uh, for three elections. And, uh, you know, but they, 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 but they are not the one complaining. You know, in Quebec, they complain a bit, don't they? In the maritime, they do, don't they complain? You live with that. In a system like that, you know, I used to say this. If you're a mayor, you have a problem, what do you do? You blame the provincial government. If you're a provincial government, you have a problem, what do you do? You blame the federal government. So we cannot blame the queen anymore, so once in a while we blame the Americans. You know, if you can pass the park, it's not bad as a technique, but, you know, but the reality is, you know, you're there, for me, the best thing to do is to put the puck in the net. How did you know, and you write about it, three majorities? How did you know when to step aside? What was your moment where you said, I'm done? I mean, you'd served a long time, but it's hard to leave. You know, I had decided at the beginning I was to be there only for two terms. Yes. The proof of that is after my second election, I started to build my house on the Lac des Pils in 1998. So it's because I was to leave uh, the politics in 2001. And, uh, you know, and as you read in the book, Aline got a bit unhappy and she said four more years and she got a standing ovation from the staff and including myself and I ran a third time. Why I wanted to quit? Because you have to know when to quit. But circumstances sometimes force you to stay. For me, you know, I, we felt that I had to stay there. And happily, as I wrote in the book, you know, uh, we would have gone to war in Iraq because within uh, Harper gave a speech against me in New York because I had said no to the war in Iraq. Yeah. And in the caucus, the group supporting Paul Martin were giving me difficulties because they were telling me that the Americans would punish us. But I did it anyway. And, uh, you know, and the, but it was one of the reasons when I ran for a third time and it was my best. Your relationship with the Queen and Aline's relationship is pretty beautiful. She's just been in the hospital. You know, she's 95. That's yes. an extraordinary relationship you have. How did you get such a... What's your message to her now after your long years of a special relationship? But to keep doing what she's done extremely well. You know, she is a very solid uh, person and, and she understands her role well and, and she is a pleasant person. And, and she liked to laugh, too. Yeah. So, you know, and uh, we had... A, and she was speaking in French uh, most of the time, and, and the Queen Mother, too. Because the Queen Mother could not speak English before she was five, she told us, because she has a nanny who was French. And, uh, you know, so when we arrived, Aline and I, the Queen Mother would come and talk to us to practice her French. And I made a joke that the Queen was speaking in French with me because she could not stand my English. So, you know, and uh, we had fun, and, uh, and she was very gr gracious. She gave me the order of merit, and, uh, you know, I'm thankful uh, because it's, according to the film uh, The Crown, uh, when she gave the order of merit to Margaret Thatcher, she said to her, don't forget that this order is selected by me personally. Yes. So, I'm still thankful. Mr. Kretschan, congrats on the new book. Thank you for your time, as always. It's a pleasure to see you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, it's always a pleasure.